We wait. Let's bring back in national trial attorney Michael Jaffer, who has been analyzing this case. And Michael, I do want to play um, a bit of the testimony from Marsha Thompson. It's always a big deal when we have the defendant on the stand. Everyone expected her to testify because you really can't get into this being a battered spouse syndrome case unless you open yourself up and tell both sides your side of the story. Uh, let's listen back to part of Marsha's testimony where she talked about her husband's previous marriage and what she learned about that. So you were aware that he had been previously married? Yes. What was the first thing that he revealed to you in terms of his prior violence? The first thing was um, how he attacked his ex-wife with a machete and threatened to kill her and slit her throat. What is his second wife's name? Um, well, Melissa is the oh. second wife. And she's the first one you found out about? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, what is the next thing you found out about? About his first wife. What's her name? Christine Thompson. And initially he had told you that she was just keeping the kids away and that was the problem between them? Yes, that she would keep the, they had one daughter, keep the daughter away and that she would go to his job at corrections and disrespect him and act crazy out in front of the workplace. And what did he state later? He stated later that he threatened to kill her as well to keep her in line. Did he initially reveal this during an act of abuse toward you? Yes. And was he... Why was he telling you this? Uh, he was trying to scare me and it worked. Michael, one of the difficulties in a trial like this with the prosecution is that you don't want to make another trial where the victim, the shooting victim in this case, uh, is on trial as well. Like, are you surprised that they did not, as far as the defense, try to bring in these ex-spouses, don't know their status, don't know what their availability would have been, but the judge also has to make sure this isn't a trial within a trial. Uh, if we recall, there was a little debate between both attorneys and the judge, which was remarkable uh, while the state was still ha had, had their case, when the judge had ruled that the statement could only come in in a limited capacity about his prior convictions. And then the defense attorney stood up and said, but obviously when she testifies, if she testifies, she can talk about it. And the judge said, no. And the attorney said, wait, so if she testifies, she cannot test she cannot say that she knew that he was charged with the battery of a prior spouse and the judge said yes and then as the judge said that she knew the mistake and she realized oh wait a minute this is too much of course you can and then she said i'm going to reserve ruling for that time that to me shows that if they tried to bring in the prior spouses i don't know if the judge would have would have allowed that because you barely allowed her to testify which would have been appealable error by the way if the judge did not let her to get on the stand and say i knew at the time when i shot him that he had all these prior you know he had this baggage and this baggage caused me to be in fear for my life and caused me to feel that you know he'd do the same thing to me and he was kind of trying to threaten me uh so at the end of the day you know I'm still, this case takes me back to law school. If only they had projector screen in our law school classes and they played a, a case like this. This case has everything. It has everything. You have the former law enforcement officer who's trained, who was wearing a vest, who at the time, which is why the state of Florida came, came at her with a murder one charge, not a murder two. But at the same time, hearing her testimony and it's gripping, they've got the perfect victim, the defense do. I mean, they've got a victim who is just a monster, right? So you've got this monster married to this well-trained, seasoned, basically, you know, Robocop, and they're together and they have kids and she's rubbing his feet to de-escalate him. And, but he didn't get off the couch and he, he was killed while he was laying down. Wow, you can teach an entire law school class from this case alone. I am so riveted by this. And it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy how law schooly this is. It doesn't cut either way, clearly. It's gonna be a tough job for this jury. They're gonna be in there like, like, you know, like roosters knocking heads. 